Sophia here from mygreatchallenge.blogspot.com Two weeks ago I did a makeup tutorial and uh, I guess it was a January look and I got a lot of comments about my eyebrows and some requests for a video about how I do my eyebrows. So what I did basically was not pluck my eyebrows for two weeks. I went to work on Friday. It was just like it's horrible. But anyway, I, I let my eyebrows grow for two weeks so that I could do a video. Um, I don't know yet how I'm going to manage the camera and the mirror together. So I'm, you know, obviously I would need to have somebody else do it for me um, in terms of the filming. But I put the camera on the tripod and um, I tried my very best to show you how I shape my eyebrows and uh, do the uh, plucking, which is something that I actually don't do as a routine. I pretty much do my eyebrows every single day. I look over, I pluck whatever I see that needs to be plucked, and this just a maintenance routine more than anything else. But anyway, um, yeah, so here's the uh, uh, video. I'm going to show you the tools that I use, and I'm going to go through step by step on how I do my eyebrows and shape them the way they are since um, everybody seems to like my eyebrows. Okay, so before I start I'm just gonna share with you the tools that I'm using. The first thing you need of course is a very very good uh, enlarging mirror and this one I believe is a Conair. I'm not sure. Let me see. Uh, what does it say? I can't tell. Yeah it's a Conair. That's what I thought. Alright, so this mirror I bought at um, Bed Bath & Body Works and it was on sale, I think it's like $69 and it was on sale for $49 and I had 20% off so I don't know, I guess I got it for maybe uh, under under $40 obviously and the reason why I like it is because the, uh, uh, there's one side here, I don't know if you can tell, that um, if I put my... Uh, if I put my tweezer right here, you can tell that this is a times 10 enlarging or magnifying mirror. And then on the other side, it's just a regular um, size mirror. So I like the 10 times magnification on this because I can really see my eyebrows. And it also has a light for home, office, and day. So right around it, there's a ring. So I'm just going to turn it on and show you the difference in light. So the first one is home. So it's just a regular incandescent light. And then for the office, where you have the uh, um, a little bit of a brighter light, you get this kind of ring. And the daytime is the brightest one, and it's this one right here, which is the one I use. So it's great because the light goes all around, so you don't get like a shadow. Your face is entirely um, lit up. So that's the mirror I use, and I would not recommend that you use your regular you know, mirror in your um, bathroom because you really want to get all those trays and the tiny little ones. If you want to really shape your eyebrows, you want a magnification that's really, really large. So 10 is really a good one. That's one that will not give you um, a distortion. After that, it really starts distorting your face and it's kind of annoying. So that's for the mirror. Then for the tools, I have this tweezer here from Revlon that I've had for years. And the reason why I keep it, you can see it's like losing its uh, um, paint on the side. It's because this tweezer, when you look at it here, it really, really leaves zero gap. There's not a single hair that gets missed with this thing. Now, I purchased another one um, a few years ago from the same brand, and it was not as good. So it's a good thing I did not throw away this one, because I think I've had it for at least eight years now. And I'm not going to change. I and mean, you can see it's perfect. So when you go and buy a tweezer, a pair of tweezers, when you go to the store, most of the time they are in a container where you can't really squeeze them. Or if you can squeeze them, by all means, you need to check them out and make sure that there's absolutely no gap between the blade. The second thing I'm using is a pair of scissors. This is not the greatest pair. Um, it's just a regular pair of scissors that I have. That I think actually these are surgical scissors. But I use them for trimming. The best kind are the ones that are very pointy. I don't have those. Basically what happens is that you end up having certain tools and then you get they're not necessarily the best tools, but you learn to um, manage with them. And now I've been using this for at least five years and that's my pair. I can't use anything else. I'm so used to using this. I can maneuver around it. So that's my pair of scissors. So... Uh, for cleanser, because you don't want to do your eyebrows on a dirty face, obviously. I use, most of the time, I use my Yves Rocher um, Pure Carmel 
um, cleanser. This is like a milk cleanser that's very hydrating. If you don't use that kind of cleanser, if you don't like milk type cleanser, I recommend that you use something that's ultra gentle um, and hypoallergenic. And the new one that I'm using right now is ultra gentle hydrating cleanser from Neutrogena because it has a creamy formula and this is really nice. It doesn't pull on my skin. It leaves my skin really nice and moisturized and supple, which is something that you really need when you do your eyebrows. And then as I'm plucking my brows, I will use... Um, cotton pads, not cotton balls, cotton pads, just to wipe off the area and remove the uh, the hair that's still sticking around that's been plucked. I don't use a dry cotton pad, I use one that's wet um, and I use my micellar cleansing water from Yves Rocher. I absolutely love this product. It's almost like a toner more than anything else. You can wash your face with it but I like it as a toner so I use that as I'm doing my eyebrows and you know cotton pads. These are I don't know, I think they were the Walgreens brand. And finally, as I'm doing my eyebrows and uh, need to shape them and, and see where I'm at with the shape, I'm using a simple um, eyebrow brush and this one is from e.l.f. I believe. Uh, yep, eyelash and eyebrow wand from e.l.f. This is very good to just brush them in shape, put them in place so that you can really follow the line, but I'll show you how I use it. So yeah, again, these are the only tools that I need. There's a uh, tweezer, scissors, a brush, and the mirror, and then some uh, pads and the cleanser. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna try to figure out a way to do my eyebrows in the mirror and have you be able to see what I'm doing. But I just wanna start with the actual shape. And to do that, I'm going to try to do a close-up. So let's get going. Let me see what it looks like. Okay, so for the shape, um, what I've learned when it comes to eyebrows is that there's a specific way where the arch needs to be. So I know, for instance, that you see where there's the end of my nostril right here. When you go straight like this, this is where your eyebrow needs to start. And then if you go like this, at the end of your eye is where the end of your eyebrow needs to be. So if you go a little bit further here, then you have a weird shape that doesn't fit any face. And if you go a little bit more over here, then you really have like a, a unibrow type look. So again, you go this way here on the edges, that's where it starts. And over here is where it ends. But for the arch, you just go right in the middle where your pupil is, and this is where the arch needs to be. See that? So it doesn't work that way for everybody and I can tell you why because over time and with age my eyes have started drooping. You see this right here? So what happens is that if I have the uh, arch exactly where it needs to be then I have more of a droop and it tends to because it's higher so it tends to give my eyes a little bit more of an aged look and um, I don't like that. I don't think anybody. I don't think anybody would. So what I did really when I reshaped my eyebrows is that because I have a tendency to go like this, right? You see that? Um, I followed the natural shape of that um, muscular move that I have on my face right here. In the old days, I guess that my eyebrow was a little bit more here. So when I was going like this, my eyebrow wasn't really moving, and I don't know. I kind of like this. So. It doesn't, I don't know if that makes sense, but the bottom line is that my eyebrow really follows my facial feature. You see that? So again, you want to have uh, your eyebrow start right here at your nostril. It ends right here at the end of your eye. And then for the arch, you go right in the middle where your pupil is. And that would be right here. So I have an arch right here. And on the other hand, it's the same way. One like this, you go this way and then where the pupil is and that's where the arch is. So let me try to figure out a way to get you a close-up so you can really see the shape of my eyebrows right now. I have not done my eyebrows in two weeks because I've had so many requests I decided okay fine I'll do my eyebrows on camera I just don't know how to do it but if I do a close-up you're gonna get to see after two weeks in particular the left one. See after two weeks this is what my eyebrows look like. So of course I have a lot of growth right here in the middle and then everything that is outside of the shape I started growing we got more length if I go like this with the brush you can see all the length and then if I go the other way you get to see some of the length as well so all of this needs to be trimmed 
right? So that's the left one, which is usually for me the hardest one to do. And you see I have some white hair growing here. I cannot hide my age. And then on the right side, it doesn't grow as much. It still grows. See the length here, this way, and then this way. That needs to be uh, taken care of. So I don't have as many stray hair on this side. So that's one of the reasons why when I do my eyebrows, I actually do them on an ongoing basis, pretty much twice a week. Anytime I see a stray, I just pluck it because they do not grow at the same rate. So let's get started. I'm going to try to figure out a way whether or not I can uh, film the mirror or if I'm going to have to try to do it directly into the camera. But regardless, I'm going to show you how I do my eyebrows reshape them and get them to look clean and professional and that's DIY. I do not spend money on having anybody do my eyebrows and one of the reasons why is because most of the time they never do the quality of the work that I do. I don't like to see a single stray hair and anytime I went to the salon they do the waxing but then I guess they're tired or they just want to move on to the next customer. They do a little bit of plucking and cutting and shaping and whatnot. Then when I go home and I look at myself in my mirror they stray hair everywhere. They just did not do a clean work and I don't see why I should pay for that. So I've learned to do it myself. I've done my eyebrows by myself for uh, at least 14 or 15 years now and that's just my routine. That's what works for me. Okay, so the first thing I do is use my uh, micellar water and I talked about that um, from Yves Rocher and I just put it on the uh, cotton pad and swipe it over my brow. I hope you can see that. I got you have I have to apologize because I'm gonna keep on looking sideways um, so I can see whether or not I'm still in the camera. And then what I do is just go ahead and shape them a little bit and at least put them in place so that I know where I'm going. And right now I'm gonna do the right side and what I start with is the middle part right here. So I just split my eyebrows in half. I just do all of this side first and then all of this side afterwards. So I just go ahead and take my tweezers and I can, um, sometimes I just take my tweezers and twist the uh, pad with it just to clean it a little bit. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is just start right here. Everything that is below my natural shape is getting removed. So this one bra right here is easy to take care of because I don't have as many growth. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to zoom a little bit more and that's the most I can do. So I'm gonna try to do them right here with the camera. So you'll notice that your tweezers are slanted. So what I do is use the um, this part this way. I don't know how to say that. Instead of having the pointy part this way, I have it, I have the flat part against my skin. I'm just gonna go ahead and pluck whatever extra bro. And I'm keeping my skin taut with my other hand and I swipe as I go with my pad that has my uh, lotion on it, my uh, toner, just to make sure that I remove everything and keep the area clean. I already did this part right here and uh, right now I'm just going into my mirror rather than try to do it through the camera so I'm hoping I'm gonna stay in focus but again with the flat part and keeping my um, fingers here to keep the area taut I just go ahead and pluck pretty much everything that is outside of the area and I just go from one area to the other I just don't go all over the place because I want to make sure I get everything so I do have some strays right here and whenever I see something that is slightly coming off what I already have as a line I just pull them out like for instance right now I know I have one here and another one underneath it that are not part of the line so what I do is switch to the pointy part and slightly pull them down and then pluck right here 
and again I use my cotton pad to move them so you can see I already have um, the shape a little bit redefined here and I just go ahead with the flat part and go along I have two right here that outside of the line that I'm going to remove as well and this is a pretty good line the only problem right now is that right here I can see that I have some again that are outside of the line so I'm just gonna pull them down and pluck them it's a long process I mean if you have never done your eyebrows before or if you want to learn new ways to do it um, I'm just letting you know that this is not something that you get out of the bathroom in um, in 10 minutes it usually takes me up to 30 minutes to do my eyebrows are gonna be too long by next week so I'm trying to grab those right okay so now I'm gonna do the middle part right here and same thing anything that's outside of my line I just go ahead and remove and you don't have to go as fast as I'm doing it's just because I know I've, I'm so used to it that I can actually go a little bit faster but you can see that right and of course it's getting all red which is normal now for the top part um, what I do is move all my hair down like this and I know what my shape is so I'm just gonna go ahead and follow with the flat part a straight line and anything that's above that line gets removed thing right here above the little hook or arch and sometime a decision needs to be made about one specific hair do I remove it or do I not remove it because sometimes what happens is that you do remove one specific hair and it ends up giving you a hole so what you need to do when you see like for instance right now I know I have this one right here what I do is that I pull it out I don't pluck it but I'm trying to see what it would look like if I remove it and whether or not it interferes with the shape and I can tell that this one doesn't so I'm just gonna go ahead and pluck it which of course shows me that a neighbor is doing exactly the same thing so got that taken care of okay so that's the basic shape I'm gonna go ahead and brush them and they don't look that they need much trimming I know the left one does there's one hair right here at the edges that I need to remove taken care of. Alright, let me let me move on to the left side which is probably the one that has the most um, straight hair and uh, you'll get to see probably a better result. And for the left side I pretty much start the same process over. I'm going to start with the middle right here and make sure that I follow the same line and remove anything in between sometimes you have some hair right here you gotta remove that as well okay so let's go ahead and do all of this tray here now on the side so the left side is a little bit more difficult for me because I'm a righty so again I'm using the flat part of my tweezer and I'm gonna use and I'm going to use the uh, brush to move the hair up so that I can really see what is stray and what is shape. I 
do have a lot of hair as opposed to the uh, right side on the left side. I'm gonna try to I gotta get my skin a little bit more taut. And then when I have too much hair right here, I just go like this and remove. It's not an easy task to do on camera, I can tell you that. Okay, so I have a stray right here, another one right here. I'm hoping I'm in focus, I cannot tell. much cleaner so now we're gonna do the part here at the bottom and see what we have right here that's still not falling into place and for that I'm using the pointy part there's this one and there's one right here I forgot one right here and another one here and then there's this one right here. So again, I'm gonna to try to pull it and see what it looks like once I remove it. Yeah, I want to interfere with the shape, so it's gotta go. And there's a little one right here and one here. And this part is a little bit too thick. So I just got to make sure I follow the line. So the line is here. So anything that's not part of the line, I'm just going to pull them down a little bit. And I know these are the ones that I have to twist. This pro has a relatively good shape on the top, so it's easy for me to know what to remove and what to keep. I know that there's some, um, I've seen some people use those little shavers for the top part of the eyebrows. Don't do that. Your bra just grows back really, really weird. It's not a good idea to use any kind of trimmer, electric, battery-operated trimmers. You're better off at that point going to a, a salon um, rather than using those. So that's pretty much it, I think. I think they're done. I'm just going to clean up a little bit more those that I need to be close to the uh, mirror for, and then I'll show you how to trim them. Okay, so sometimes um, I need to trim them a little bit. So what I do is start with the top and just brush them. And anything that comes above the line just gets a little bit of a trim. You see, like for instance, I have a few right here that just need a little bit of trim. 
and I go ahead and take my scissors and that's one of the reasons why you need a very nice pair of scissors that are pointy and thin but I'm used to using these so I just go ahead and trim I don't know if you can tell the difference and then some of these not too much this time around don't need too much of a trim so these I'm not going to touch just did the ones on top so now we're going to move on to this one right here and it's important to really get all of them now I don't need to trim them here uh, just need to trim a little bit right here you see So I just trim those and that just gives a little bit more of a, uh, a cleaner look and right here I have just a few that I need to just trim a little bit right here and that's just about it so now there we go I have it's done. There's not a single one of them. I cleaned them all up. Right? So, now there's different looks that you can have. You can have like a square shape, like I do right here. Or you can have something that's more round. I find that the square shape looks better for me because uh, I'm already round all over. So, I don't need to add. But basically, that's what I do. Now, um, I'm going to take a shower and just to you know wash up and do my hair and whatnot but what I do when I go to the shower because there's like some redness I use a mask I use this Freeman and it's um, anti-stress Dead Sea Minerals it comes up as a uh, blue mask you've probably seen it it's available at all of the drugstore and what I do is just put it all over my face and I really don't worry about um, I don't put in right here but I definitely put it all over the area that I've just tweezed because it calms that area and it also gives it a little nice cleaning just in case I found that if I don't do that sometimes I have a little bit of a uh, um, blemish or a bump that comes up I definitely have that if I go to the salon and I get my eyebrows waxed I break out in little little bumps and by the time the bumps are over then I got hair again so what's the alright so that was it um I hope you got an idea how to do it um I'm hoping this was interesting that you got some few tips on how to do your own eyebrows again I do it myself I don't go to the salon I don't believe in paying somebody to do a job that is not as good as the one that I do myself and um, yes so that's the shape I have right now over the years I've had many many shape I remember back in 1993 I had like little thin 1930s type eyebrows and uh, before that they were just like huge my eyebrows are really really big actually my eyebrows would go from here all the way up to here they're like a big bar so it took many many years and many attempts at trying to find the appropriate shape for me and I think that this is pretty much what works for me for now considering my age um I don't know as my face falls down over the years uh, over the next few years I may change the shape but right now I'm pretty happy with the way they look so um again this was Sophia from my great challenge.blogspot.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you later. Bye!